Hi, it's Simon Green Shorts, and today I'm going to make a aircrete furnace to melt aluminum. Salut, privet, and osio. That's French, Russian, and Cherokee. The reason that I say hello in all these languages is because the YouTube audience is worldwide. You may not understand everything I'm saying in English, but I want you to at least hear hello in your language. I'm actually about to make a new t-shirt with all of the hellos I've used so far, and I would love to include yours. So if you haven't said hello in your language, leave that in the comments below, and I'll use it when I make that t-shirt. So I'm going to make an aircrete furnace today, and I'm gonna make it to work with this crucible. <laughs> Funny story, when I bought this crucible, I thought I was getting this size. <laughs> it's hard to tell on Amazon just how big something is, and I didn't actually check the measurement. So I have a little furnace that works with this one, but I wanna make a bigger one that lets me melt a lot more aluminum at once. I often make the mistake of calling it a forge. Forge is used to heat metal for the purpose of blacksmithing or working that metal. A furnace is used to heat metal to melt it. So that's what I'm gonna do in this crucible. And because I want this aircrete furnace to be more durable, I'm actually gonna cast it inside this five gallon metal bucket. This is actually a new bucket. I'm going to actually make a form inside that bucket by wrapping the crucible in some plastic, pouring the aircrete around it, and then pulling this out for relief. Uh, I will create the air gap by having this sit higher, then I'll create the propane torch port in the bottom. That's enough talking about a video. You're here to see it happen. Let me get to it. Audio track today provided by Wind, formerly member of Earth, Wind, and Fire. I know I had some comments that the wind chimes got a little loud in previous videos. That's because I'm working right here underneath them. I will take them down if they get too loud. But for now, enjoy the melodies. The first thing I'm going to pour in this is the bottom. I need that to have a little more structure than the aircrete is going to provide. So I'm gonna use a layer of castable refractory cement where the crucible will sit. But underneath that, I'm actually going to salvage some of the broken pieces of aircrete that I have, as well as the stuff that's just too crumbly. So this was one of the ill-fated pieces of the aircrete rocket stove build when I used blocks and even with some additional cure time, it's just still pretty brittle. Of course, I got my mask on because I don't want any of this stuff in my lungs. These are some blocks from one of my original pours that are pretty rigid too, so I'm gonna put those in. I'm gonna break this stuff down and put it in. I'm gonna pull the armature out though. Pouring in the loose stuff, and then I'm gonna level it out. Gonna test fit my crucible. So that gives me a little more space to pour the castable refractory to get this up to about this level. Once this is cast with the shape of the crucible, it's going to actually sit probably you know, three or so inches higher to create an air gap for the fire coming in to heat it. And then I'll make a top that sits up here that uh, covers it with enough space to fit around it. All right, now I'm gonna mix up some refractory cement and pour it in. Thank you. 
All right, so here, here's a semi-pro tip here. And that is that initially this looked wetter than it was gonna need to be. Decided to give it a little more time for that water to kind of intersperse, spread out a little bit. And now, this is the perfect consistency. If I had added water to this, it would have ended up too wet. So give this stuff a little bit of time to soak up that water and that will help you get the right consistency. My goal here is just to cover this with you know, half an inch to three quarters of an inch, just enough to lock that down and provide a stable base. By getting the consistency right, this will set up a lot more quickly than it did in my previous video. And I'm gonna agitate this to get it as level as possible and then give it a little bit of time to set up. The reason I'm using aircrete for this furnace is because of its thermal properties. To illustrate that, I wanna do a quick test using my Seek thermal camera here on my iPhone. That's gonna give me a thermal reading for this block as we apply heat. There's our cool block of aircrete right now. Let me heat it up. The propane torch is running about 626 degrees on the hot side of the block. Let's check the other side. On the other side of the block, it's hovering between 67 and 69 degrees. That's pretty cool. Literally, that's cool. That intense heat hitting the block right in that one spot did degrade the air creep just a little bit, but because this furnace is gonna spread that heat out around the crucible and and give it something else to absorb into being the crucible itself and the metal inside it i think the aircrete should last a pretty long time but when it breaks down i can just pop it out and recast even the insulating materials inside of those massive steel furnaces eventually break down and have to be replaced to prep my crucible to serve as a form i'm just gonna put it inside a plastic bag and secure the plastic bag with duct tape. I want it to be flat around the crucible so it doesn't get stuck in the aircrete. I'm right on target with this. If you knew my dad, you'd understand my sense of humor. All right, the refractory is firmed up enough that I can set the crucible down on it. But before I prepare the aircrete, I'm gonna measure the depth where my base stops so I know where to drill the port for the propane torch. I had a recommendation in the comments from Rock Art to switch my foaming agent from the Palm Olive Professional to seventh generation. Both include sodium laurel sulfate, which is the foaming agent. But as I saw in some of my research, seventh generation includes glycerin, which should help stabilize the foam. Thank you, Rock Art. I appreciate the suggestions. I had a comment from Andrew that noted that the very first blast of foam was a little bit more liquid and recommended that I generate that first blast into a separate bucket so it doesn't degrade the consistency of the foam. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate the feedback. Rock Art noted that my Portland looked a little bit chunky. This bag had been in the garage for a while and it has 
uh, gotten a little chunky just hardening up because of the moisture in the garage. So I'm gonna screen this so I can get the best grade of Portland that I've got left in this bag. It'd be better if I had one piece of this big enough for the job, but it's what I got. Not a hundred percent powder, but better than if I hadn't done this. I'm gonna try and mix up about twice as much as I have been. I wanna see if I can get this pour done in one batch. In case I have more than I think I do, I'm gonna have a form on hand to pour the extra air creep into. I'm happy with this slurry. Now for the foam. I'm gonna go with my one ounce of liquid to two cups of water. I'm gonna prime the foam generator away from the cement and then bring it over once I see good foam and then start mixing it in. really happy with this consistency. So now I'm gonna get the crucible in the bucket and get the air creed in. The 10 inches of depth that remain in the bucket are perfect for the nine inches of crucible height that I've got to work with. That'll leave me room to cap off the air creed with another layer of the castable refractory cement for a nice sturdy top. I still got room in my form here, so I'm gonna mix up a second batch about the same size as the first one.
problem I ran into when I was making the blocks is there was a, a flaky lighter layer on the top of the block where it was exposed to the air. So I'm actually gonna cover this up with a piece of plastic, see if that helps reduce that layer. It'll also let me pull the air creep back away from the crucible so I don't lock it down in there. The second batch was almost the perfect quantity that I needed to fill this up. But there's a little bit left and I'm actually gonna drop it into this loaf pan just as the test block. This will give me a quick look at how well this stuff holds up and if that lighter layer shows up on this block that is exposed to the air. A quick update on the Franken foam prototype. I did two full wraps of Teflon tape on this thread and that kept it sealed pretty well even with just hand tightening. So this may be an option for the final design. I like the ability to unscrew this off and pour it in versus having another valve sticking off this thing. So I'm gonna keep an eye on this and make a final decision at the end of the month. All right, I'm gonna wrap this video up here because I wanna give that a full week to cure before I try and unform it. I'll come back in probably and wet it and perhaps scrape around the top there to make sure the crucible isn't trapped in there by the aircrete. I definitely learned my lesson in last week's video when I didn't allow myself enough cure time before I tried to unform things. It didn't work out well, although I was able to redeem it. Let me just say that my aircrete investigation is gonna take longer than a month. Initially, I was thinking I'd have four or five videos in this series, but I'm gonna play this out a little more slowly to make sure I do things right. So the next video, I'm going to unform this and make the top. I'm gonna follow that video with the next build video, which is going to be the stacked cast aircrete rocket stove. After that video, the body of the furnace should have had enough time to cure that I can do a test firing. Special thanks to my patrons and members for helping make these videos possible. If you'd like to get additional short form content on the workings of my backyard sustainability lab, you can click the join button below or the link in the description that will take you over to Patreon. The content is the same in both places, so no need to join both. Thank you so much for your support. Of course, there's no obligation to do that to continue to see the free content here on YouTube. As always, my mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Keep all the great comments and suggestions coming. Please subscribe if you haven't done so and click the bell so you know when I release a new video. And I'll see you next Saturday.